how are you feeling? Uh, uh, this will be uh, for around one hour, a short presentation, and then we will uh, move over to the last sort of closing remarks uh, to finally end this uh, very fruitful um, training. So uh, the last session of all will be focusing on uh, the roadmap uh, production, uh, mapping for engagement and action. Um, the idea is to share experiences of the rollout of the monitoring exercise uh, and uh, so to support national coordinators in the preparation for implementation. Um, one sec. So, uh, to a large extent, uh, what I'm going to talk to you about uh, for the next 15 minutes will be quite a bit of recap uh, of what has been said during the last modules. Uh, so, uh, I think for some of you this may not be new, but for others of you who have not been involved in the roadmap uh, design, uh, this can be very useful. Uh, so please have patience with those of you who, who feel that this is not uh, anything new. Um, you've seen this a lot during the last few days. Uh, these are the different phases of the monitoring exercise. Um, the first phase, inception, uh, is uh, one uh, really important part of this is the production of the roadmap and uh, all of these different sessions, uh, the phases of the ex uh, exercise will be um, reflected in this roadmap. Um, so uh, what Louise just talked about, uh, the need for, for different types of support uh, will have to be, this reflection will have to be done already at the point of, of designing the roadmap. Um, so that when, when we looked at the whole, um, timeline, the different months allocated for, for all of these different phases. Bear in mind that this is really flexible and, and already at this point start this reflection of what are the institutional uh, resources that can be drawn upon uh, to uh, fruitfully implement the monitoring exercise. What other uh, meetings, fora uh, are planned during the upcoming year that can be taken advantage of uh, for uh, uh, the monitoring exercise. What, what meetings are planned uh, where stakeholders, stakeholders can be reached out to uh, in order to um, sort of uh, get the synergies and take advantage of, of having all the stakeholders together uh, in order to mobilize engagement for this uh, exercise. Um, When this roadmap has been sent in to, to the joint support team, what happens in the next phase is that we uh, will produce the serpent, as we call it, uh, which is a standardized format that has been produced uh, by the joint support team. This will be shared back to the uh, country and also uh, included into the dashboard. So it will be available to all the stakeholders, uh, everyone else who may be interested uh, and can be um, used to follow the whole process. So uh, we have used, in this case, the Yemen example uh, as one example of, of a good roadmap. But we've also received a lot of good roadmaps from, from many of you. And I wanted to just highlight uh, a few aspects of this roadmap, why, why we're mentioning this here. Um, looking at the data collection uh, from October 23 to January 24, uh, we already have a very clear identification of the ministries uh, that will hold responsibilities uh, during this um, process. Um, and looking further down into phase four uh, for the dissemination of the country results, uh, Yemen has uh, already at the time of deciding the roadmap identified uh, that the results briefs will be featured during the donor portfolio review meetings as a discussion item on reconstruction and recovery plans, uh, and hence will inform SDG-related reports. Um, so this is one example of how, you know, looking ahead, how these different upcoming events can be used uh, as a way to, uh, to um, sort of, as a resource for, for the um, um, monitoring exercise. 
Uh, and then further examples. I think some of these have been coming up uh, during these sessions, but I think it's also important to just uh, mention this again. Uh, uh, for the use of existing structures uh, that have been uh, part of already the design of the roadmap phase, Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, found out that the donor coordination forum can be used. Uh, in Cameroon, uh, we got a really good road roadmap where the stakeholder committee uh, is identified as a possible venue. We also have Indonesia that identified the multi-stakeholder forum. Uh, for use of collected data and other products, uh, Binna, uh, who's not with us, uh, has identified the Development Cooperation Report and the Voluntary Report on SDGs uh, as other reports that uh, have synergies with uh, monitoring exercise. DRC, uh, sitting with us, uh, the VNR uh, is used, uh, and additional techn technical workshops will be ensuring data collection in Burkina Faso and Egypt. Um, and again, Yemen uh, in phase four uh, will be using the re result briefs during the portfolio review meetings with donors um, to aid discussions on reconstruction and recovery plans. But yeah, and also, I mean, the point to make here is, is really to, at this point and during this, uh, events that Major mentioned, to, to look at what is available in terms of, of resources in country. I mean, what, what type of uh, institutional resources can you draw upon uh, throughout this time? Uh, what is there in terms of time uh, and, and also financial resources? Uh, and I mean, adjust the timeline according to this, uh, looking ahead uh, at what's coming up. Uh, and just to mention, I think you've seen this, uh, but if you have not been into the dashboard, uh, we encourage you to, to go to this link. Uh, I think most of you have. Uh, but this is used, I mean, that's, this is one of the uh, services that the uh, joint support team is doing, is to uh, continuously update the dashboard with, uh, with data and uh, the different uh, products that we're producing, uh, and they will be available to all stakeholders uh, so that they can follow the whole process as it's uh, going on. Uh, and uh, outside of, of what's available in your country, uh, or I mean uh, within your own institutions, uh, it's also the time at the time of the design of the uh, country roadmaps. Uh, to think about what other types of support uh, can be available. And this is very much what we just discussed, I think, uh, previously. But just as a recap, uh, the UN country team, uh, examples of what they can uh, provide is to recommend ways how to sync the exercise with other country activities, including consultations uh, and reflection, dialogues, uh, actions. The county team will know your country, uh, and they are also conducting their own activities uh, and should be able to engage in dialogue with you on, on ideas, uh, what to link the uh, exercise with. Uh, they can also help out to plan uh, action dialogues and support facilitating joint reflection, dialogue and action, to leverage the monitoring results and consultations for SDG implementation, as well as to support mobilizing development partners and other development actors. I mean, in the end, uh, UN country teams will be very different from uh, country to country. And we cannot promise uh, what, what type of support they can uh, provide, but uh, it's one very important venue to explore uh, when you design the, this process. Uh, and then the uh, joint support team, uh, I mean, will be there all the time, uh, always able to answer questions and provide technical support throughout the whole process. Then, uh, I mean, this again will be very different from country to country. Um, 
champions, don't forget the uh, possibility to identify a development uh, partner champion, uh, which could be uh, part of the UN system, it could be the EU, for example, in some of the countries, the delegation, and so on. Uh, they can be you know, an extra engaged uh, development partner to support in undertaking these exercises. Uh, I mean, they could also take on a coordinating role and mobilize other development partners, um, you know, uh, invite for uh, hosts, coordination sessions with other donors to, to build, to mobilize engagement for this exercise. And uh, support can also, yeah, as I mentioned, be very different from country to country. You know your countries, uh, you will be available, uh, the most able to to identify the best suited uh, entities. Uh, but, but this is a process that should start earlier, the design of the whole uh, exercise and be part of the uh, roadmap. So uh, we will now move into the last exercise. Um, we had initially thought to uh, do a couple of different groups, uh, but that will be difficult now. And also, we feel that many of you have done, uh, I mean, you've produced roadmaps uh, and don't need really support at this level, while some of you others uh, still have not submitted a roadmap and, and uh, are at a completely different phase of the exercise. So what we propose now is to have two different groups, uh, one for those of you who have not uh, produced a roadmap, to uh, start uh, with the exercise, we'll hand out the papers. Uh, and the um, idea is really to start the reflection process of, of how a roadmap can look in your particular case, um, which elements should be included. And for those of you who have already done this uh, and don't uh, need any more exercise of this, we'll have more of a help desk at that table uh, where uh, we'll have our colleagues present uh, who can answer any questions and guide uh, to have more of a sort of interaction, uh, interactive discussion on, on uh, any questions that have come up during the roadmap. After this, uh, we'll reconvene in 20 minutes, I think, uh, or we could even allow a bit more, uh, if you feel, uh, and to have an open discussion on the floor uh, on, on any issues related to the roadmap development. All right, so, um Thank you all for this great exchange. I was actually expecting some applause of expressions of happiness <laughs> after uh, the news that Axel has shared that we've actually are about to finish this and you are about to be released from this room. Um, so just a couple of short ideas right now. And it's uh, an opportunity for us to take a look at what was exchanged a couple of days ago regarding your expectations. You might recall that we did this quick exercise to take the temperature of the room and what were your expectations regarding this. Many of those related to learning good practices of specific uh, points of the monitoring, understanding the new framework, understanding the new process, um, acquiring knowledge to implement the exercise, uh, understanding other, uh, let's say, how the implementation of this will be carried out at country level. Um, there's also a couple of comments uh, highlighting the importance of having the recordings from these sessions, and we are happy to share them with you once they have been edited to and condensed as learning materials. Um, we will, of course, also share notes from this uh, from the, all the discussions so that you can take home and we will be following up with countries that have developed their initial drafts or ideas for drafts. We know that a lot of consultations in country need to happen after this, but we are happy that some uh, key first thinking has been uh, started here. Now, uh, after having this, let's say this, uh, discussions and, and uh, you have seen the contents of the sessions, we have tried to address in meticulous detail every phase of the process, every, let's say, the use of the online reporting tool, a technical demonstration was given to him behind closed doors earlier today, and we have also worked with you to 
extract some ideas, some challenges, some potential uh, contributions to the peer learning and the, and the, the knowledge sharing that we want to stimulate uh, during phase five. There's a lot of us for us to reflect here also. And uh, as we come to the end of this, this version of the program, we would like to invite you to, again, take out your phones or your computers and then let's do a quick check of where we stand right now in terms of uh, what's coming. So I'm in a minute you will see another slide to do a quick five minute Mentimeter exercise. So we're very happy to have been able to catalyze this uh, thinking uh, after the, the exercise and we'll, we'll stand next to you almost 24-7 in order to provide advice, uh, knowledge and putting together uh, countries that might be perhaps further ahead in the process and also uh, using that opportunity to solve issues from your peers and also engaging other arms and partners that work with us uh, and in the non-executive capacity so that in case there are problems or challenges identifying potential focal points or stakeholders to be engaged, we can also help you uh, solve some of those issues. Mm -hmm. You will oh, have received awesome. right now okay. a uh, exit survey, which is good also for us to just get impressions of how the training went, what, what, what are the aspects that we can improve in future versions of this, and stay tuned for news on that on those future versions. I think our colleagues from COICA might have some, um, some ideas or messages to share regarding the tour that we will have this afternoon and in maybe 15 minutes or so we should be ready to uh, start the closing session. So if it's appropriate right now I will give the floor to our colleague uh, Uni for this.